Are you looking for an athletic scholarship? You're in the right place. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. We're here to help your family navigate the recruiting road all the way to an athletic scholarship. He's a recruiting expert and a dad of a D1 athlete and a newly committed high school athlete that just received an athletic scholarship. He's got a wealth of experience to share. Here's Recruit Me CEO, Brent Hanks. Welcome to episode 297 of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. This episode is part one of a two-part interview with a college basketball player, Quinn Nelson. In this episode, you will get Quinn's background before and during high school, Quinn's future, his recruitment to Southwest Baptist University, and how his club and practice affected his recruitment. We will cover some of Quinn's accomplishments during this interview. But for some background, here are some of his college accolades. Quinn is a 6'3", 170-pound shooting guard for the Southwest Baptist Bearcats in Bolivar, Missouri. Southwest Baptist University, or SBU, is an NAIA Division II school in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. In Quinn's senior year, here in the 2021-2022 season, he was named the Great Lakes Valley Conference Player of the Year, First Team All Great Lakes Valley Conference, D2 CCA Midwest Region First Team, and NABC Midwest Region All Second Team. Quinn holds records at SBU for the most games and most minutes played. He started every game over his four years. He holds the record for the most career three-pointers made and the best career free throw percentage. Quinn and his Bearcats had a 21-6 and record this season. He also holds school records at Ozark High School and many, many accolades from high school. Let's get into part one of a two-part interview with Quinn Nelson. Well, welcome, Quinn. And uh, I wanted to start out uh, the interview by uh, having you tell us a little bit about uh, you and your family background in sports. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brent. Um, first off, uh, my mom, and my dad. My mom was a stud volleyball player in high school, and then she went on to get a scholarship to play at uh, Missouri Western State. I'm sure the recruiting process for her was a little different than it is now, but yeah, she went to go play there, and that's where she met my dad. And my dad was the son of a college coach. His dad coached at uh, Park University in Kansas City. And so my dad went to Missouri Western, played on the basketball team for a little bit. And then after college, my mom was kind of done with sports. And my dad, he got into girls and boys high school coaching and started out on started out at some small schools and kind of worked his way to some bigger schools, but really just coached um, girls high school basketball for almost 20 years. And that's what he did until um, me and my brother were born. And then he kept doing it until my brother got into junior high. And then we just him being a high school coach, we always had access to a gym. And so we were always in the gym, just fell in love with basketball pretty quickly. And we couple, we kind of delved into some other sports and stuff, but we always always came back to basketball. So in, uh, in junior high, my brother was pretty good at basketball, probably, probably the best player in our town. And we decided to move. At that time, we were at Richland, Missouri, and that's just a smaller school, probably class two, I think. And then we decided to move and try to expand on our opportunities. And we went to Ozark, which at that time and still is the biggest classification in Missouri. So we went there and my brother, who's four years ahead of me, he went through the whole process of playing high school basketball. And then he just went on to college just to be a a student. And then it was my turn and I went and played high school and then was blessed enough to be able to come here at SBU and play. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, your high school career. Uh, my older son, uh, the Recruit Me families have uh, heard in nauseam about Parker, and uh, you two got to play together, had a great uh, successful high school career, and got to play in uh, some big games, the Tournament of Champions uh, that I've talked about before. So tell us a little bit about your high school career and some of the records that you set at Ozark. Uh, high school was super fun, and I really enjoyed it. You know, I just making those relationships and friends, especially with Parker, you know, one of my best friends. We just had a lot of talent and a lot of good guys that were really, good, really good athletes. And, you know, coming in, we had one of our guys, Kurt, he went and played varsity. And, you know, Parker and I, we were on JV as freshmen and then just playing that and getting used to that level. And we kind of just got better each year together and took took each, took each some guys with us each year. And eventually we had our whole group and that junior and senior year. And we were really one of the better teams in the area and probably the state. Um but it was just really fun. We just got we just got along really well, and it was our the system we were in, and Coach Schweitzer, and just the community was really fun to play for. We won, we won a lot of games. I think we won like twenty games every year, or just around there. 
And yeah, like you said, playing in really fun games, playing in that tournament of champions, like Oak Hill and Christ the King and those people that I'm seeing on TV now or in the NBA or even the Olympics with Kelton Johnson. It's really cool to look back and think that we played them. And even other people, like we played Blue Valley Northwest and they have a guy, they have Christian Brown at Kansas. So just playing a lot of people and even like the local schools like Kickapoo had some big time division one athletes and we still see that now. So just playing at that really high level with um, with people like Parker and some other and some of our other friends was really fun. And yeah, I was able to have a really good career there. I, I broke the all time career threes, um, I think free throw percentage. And I'm, I think I was um, six on scoring list, if I remember right. Tell us about your uh, four years. You're a, you're a senior at uh, Southwest Baptist in, in Bolivar, Missouri. It's a Division uh, two school in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. So tell us about your four years at SBU and uh, kind of what's in your future. Yeah, this is. I've had a, such a great experience at SBU, man. It's just been such a um, ride of development for me emotionally, physically, and just mentally. Um, you know, when I came in as a freshman, I really connected with uh, Coach Clark Sheehy and a different assistant coach at the time who had to leave. But our new assistant, our other assistant, Aaron Niven, came in and we got along really well. And that was really big for me just to kind of click with them. And we kind of saw the vision for what this we wanted this program to be. The year before I got here, the um, the men's basketball program, it just wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, just wasn't competing very highly in the, in the MIAA at the time. So we just saw the vision and we said we really wanted to change this culture around and, you know, get the right guys and be about the right stuff that we can't just recruit talent over good character guys. And we have to like kind of go align with the values of SBU and just, we want to be good Christian men and kind of live by that standard. And then basketball will follow suit with that. So we went with that. And my first year I was uh, right from the get go, I was able to work my way into the starting lineup and I've been able to start every game since. So I've been really obviously blessed by that. Maybe that first year was just such a learning experience for me and just getting used to the physicality and the skill and the speed at the division two level. I mean, there's, there's hoopers everywhere and division two, there's no doubt. I mean, you can just see that with like Northwest Missouri state, but yeah, that first year was just a learning curve for me. We were 14 and 16 and that was like my first losing season I've ever had. And so that was just a lot to go through with like a bunch of different guys. But then after that, um, some guys left, we got some new recruits and we're kind of able to rebuild the program kind of, and just get a lot of guys that we thought would bring value to the team off the court and on the court, just with camaraderie and chemistry and just seeing the vision and, you know, sacrificing individuality just for the team's success. And so right from then, we we could immediately see um, the team boosted in the right direction. So my sophomore year, we were 20 and nine and we had some really good wins. You know, we beat at that time, Southern Indiana was 12th in the country and we beat them, who's now a Division I school. We beat Bellarmine, who was now a Division I school. They're number one in the country and we beat them. We got our first win against Drury in eight years. So like that was really just a kicker for the right direction for us. And that next year uh, was that COVID year. So we only played um, conference games and we were 15 and seven. And like it was just a different year with COVID and everything. We were still successful. We were top four in the league. Um, but yeah, it was just a different year. And then this past year, my senior season here, we were 21 and six, which is the best um, SBU has been since winning the MIAA in 2008. And yeah, after my freshman year, we went to the GLVC. And this year we won the regular season conference championship. Uh, we were we weren't able to make the national tournament. We were probably one of the bigger teams that was snubbed in the country. But I mean, it was still a really successful season. It's been a really good career here. And you got to uh, do something kind of unique. You actually uh, SBU switched conferences, so you actually got to go uh, to a bunch of away games and play teams at at home and away uh, in one conference, and then you flipped over to the uh, GLVC and got to play another group of uh, teams. So you got a pretty unique look over the four years there at SBU. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, it's just so different. I think I'm thinking back to my time. I mean, both I think MIAA and GLVC are probably two of the top three or four conferences in Division Two in the country. So it's been really cool. I think MIAA, when I'm just comparing it, like MIAA has a lot of really athletic guys who are just like really tall, lanky and athletic and just like so fast and everything. And then I think GLVC, I think of more like IQ and like what skill guys. And so there's just cla- those different types of players I was able to play against. I think really helped me out just being able to always be ready to go against someone different. And yeah, North, like I said, my MIAA is stacked, Washburn, Northwest Missouri State, Missouri Southern, all those schools are really good. And we come over to the GLVC and there's not really a drop off. At the point, at that time, we had Bellarmine. But like now, now there's teams like Truman State and Lewis and Southern Indiana this year and like UND. There's just a ton of good teams and a lot of talent. So you are a senior uh, in in college. What are your options here for the future between the COVID and graduate school options? 
Yeah, uh, COVID, uh, yeah, it made for a weird year, but it created a really good opportunity for uh, every college athlete pretty much. And what's on the table for me is I could come back to SBU for my fifth year and try to and get my, pursue my master's degree here. Or, I've, or I'm, in, I'm actually in the transfer portal, portal right now and talking to some other schools at Division II, Division I level, just weighing out my options, see if I want to go play my last year and get a master's degree at elsewhere. Well, and so you are you are now going through the recruiting process as a 22 year old uh, <laughs> uh, senior. So, so and that's one reason we we uh, are doing this so that we can because uh, not only do you go through it through high school, but if you go to a junior college, there's an opportunity to get recruited again. And with the transfer portal and all the sports, there's there's opportunities and graduate yeah. school. So, kind of unique uh, unique times here uh, for uh, for all sports. Yeah, for sure. And it's definitely unprecedented times. And especially for coaches, you know, usually they're trying to you recruit guys for four years and get here long term commitments. And they still are. But you, they also just have to understand that with these times, people are always going to be wanting to venture out and see what else is out there. And you can't really blame um, student athletes for that. If they don't if there's one little thing that they might be inconvenienced by or just something that they're not familiar or like nothing they're too familiar with like that's good enough maybe for some people to leave and it's just the way that the times now and just people have to adapt to it so kind of going back to high school your high school recruitment and uh you know kind of give you give uh, our families an idea uh, the tournament of champions is a is a nationwide uh, uh tournament where you you mentioned some of the teams the oak hills and the mount verdes and and uh, i think uh, Bronny jr was there this this year so yeah. you you played three games against great competition, averaged 25 points a game uh, against great competition, made the all-tournament team in the Tournament of Champions, had a great junior and senior year there at Ozark. Were people just knocking your door down uh, to, to uh, recruit you basketball-wise after all that? It's a great question because it really would seem like it, but at, actually at the point, I mean, it was so late. I feel like well, I was like in January, my senior year at TOC, and it really only pushed the people that were recruiting me that much harder. I really didn't get a ton of, new looks but kind of rewinding back to that like so like end of junior year season ends and i don't really i'm not hearing anything like i don't really have any recruitment and I, at that point i just don't know what to expect though so you know i make a i make a highlight film and i just, I, I just put it out there i put it out on twitter just for social media time i kind of asked coach schweitzer to push it out there just to see what can go on and then I joined a little grassroots AAU program, the Missouri Flight, under Dale Lambert. It's nothing – at that point, it's nothing that's in the circuits, not Under Armour, Adidas affiliated. Um, we're just playing – we're playing tournaments all across the Midwest, but we're not like, – yeah, we're not in any circuit or anything. And I was exposed to a ton of coaches and all those guys, but, you know, it's really like – it's really just fit and everything. And while I'm grateful for my time at AAU and I was able to play against good competition and make good relationships – it's just a uses a different style of play than a structure like high school and stuff. So I didn't think that I really played that well in that spring and that summer. And in return, I didn't really hear a ton from coaches. I had a couple, I think I had a couple um, in it, like local NAIs, maybe a D2 um, talking to me from that mixtape or from the highlight film I put up just talking about that, but yeah, nothing too serious, just very brief talking over the phone or text. And then come the start of my senior year, you know, um, that wraps up my AU and that's when I that's when I hear from SBU for the first time. I remember in August, their assistant coach just really introduced himself to me over text, talking to me, just getting to know each other. And then, like I said, um, some NAIs, Evangel in Springfield, uh, North Ark, JUCO in Arkansas. So just a couple. I mean, nothing crazy. And that's kind of like the experience of my high school recruitment. It really wasn't anything crazy. I just had a, a good number of D2s. You know, as season started going on, um, I started out my senior year pretty well. And just in that first – we had a first tournament, and I was able to play pretty well. And I kind of got some other nods. Like, jury started talking to me, I remember. And then and SBU started to, like, re-up what they were talking about. They kind of took me on a visit on homecoming. So I got to come see the campus and meet a lot of people. And then, yeah, they got involved. And around that same time as I kept playing throughout, like, the blue and gold – um, like Rockhurst out of Kansas City got involved and I started to get some offers from those D2, you know, SBU offered me and I got the jury offer and I would just keep going through there, keep playing. Yeah. And like I said, tournament champions, that was awesome. And that was such a great opportunity for me and the guys. But surprisingly, I, I thought, you know, you thought of playing against those top people in the country that some more interest would have came my way, but it really just pushed the people that were already at me to push hard, even harder. And if that's what it was meant to happen, then that's okay. And that's what it did. And so I just heard from them a lot. Um, very late in the process, I heard from a couple of MIAA schools. Northwest Missouri State jumped on me um, kind of middle of my senior year, a little bit later than 
um, the other schools, but I still took a visit there. But yeah, it really just came down to like um, Drury, SBU, Rockhurst, and Northwest Missouri State. So really just four D2 schools. I never really got any D1 interest in high school, but I think it was the right thing for me at that time. Cool. Obviously, I got to see you all through the years, and 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 I knew you could play. You know, six three shooting guard, and you're 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 athletic. You got stronger here when you got in college, and that 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 helped a lot. It, it is frustrating. You think that you would average twenty five points a game in the tournament champions, and then the phone would just ring off the hook. And that's not the way recruiting works. And that's one yeah. of the reasons that we we do this, and why I wanted to talk to you. One of the things that I there's a couple of things that I think that you did very very well. You did not go and play on a club team with a whole bunch of stars you you picked a good fit for you where you could go and play and show off your skills is that a good assessment yeah absolutely and then you didn't go chasing the the club teams you shot did i hear you say 500 shots a day you could i mean it's probably around there yeah i mean i got a lot of shots up a day (laughs) so you worked on your game until you realized that you were recruitable. You picked the right club. You had a good high school career and then made a, what I think is a great choice because like you mentioned earlier, you, you started every game at, at SBU. I think you were a career leader in games played and in minutes and yeah. uh, you could have gone bigger someplace and, and sat for two years and maybe played. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's not always the, that's not a wrong decision. I was so proud of the decision that you made where you went and you, you made the most of your, uh, of your time. I wrote down that you played 908 minutes your freshman year. Yeah, that's a good bit. And, and you played 845 your senior year. Did you not get better? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I definitely got better, but I just think that's just that's not just so the program, man. We got better. I didn't, they didn't have to play me as much. <laughs> you, got, you got older. Was what you, yeah, what you, you got. had the legs. <laughs> so, Quinn... Tell us some things that you think you did right during your uh, high school recruitment into college, and then some of the things that maybe you would you would have done different now that you kind of look back on it. There's a, a couple of different things, and I know it might change for some people, but because my recruitment was kind of slow in high school, I kind of wanted to take my time. I didn't want to push anything during the season. Um, I really wanted to. I mean, I wanted to focus on trying to win as much as I could in my senior year of high school. And I was talking to college coaches, and they even found it. Sometimes they put deadlines on me and stuff. And some people, the recruitment process is really stressful and they want to get it over with. But when it was kind of slow for me, I kind of just wanted to see what else I could get. Or maybe I was going to make a state run and someone was going to come in at the last minute that really interests me or something. So I think it was good that I took my time and really helped weigh out my options. I kept playing, but that changes back and forth. But um, I think just being able to talk to a lot of people about it, um, talk, and obviously talk to the coaches, but you know when you're getting recruited that the coaches are going to be they're going to be really like, they're going to sell you on a lot of high points and they're going to really sell the university and what they are, which is all good. And they're going to give you high points, which is all valuable. But I think talking to the players on the team was really important for me. And you, and more than just like surface level stuff, like asking if they like it or asking like if the school is cool or like stuff like that. Um, I remember asking one of my, one of the seniors who was a junior at that time, who would have been a senior my freshman year. I was just, I was putting them to the ringer with questions is like really making sure that if I was going to invest a long term at SBU, that like, I was going to get know what I was getting into, and so I was asking about coach. I was putting him in certain situations, asking him like, when things get like this, what's the team like? Like, are you? How is your relationship with everybody on the team? I just want to know for sure if I was going to fit in with these guys. And I just took my time. I jury. I talked to their players a lot. I mean, I just was talking to all people. And not that those guys answered the questions wrong, but I just felt like it was more of a fit with me at. SBU and you know getting on campus really helps I know visits aren't always possible if it's distance or whatever it is but visits are really valuable and you just feel you just get a feel for everything when you're on campus and being able to talk to professors and just being able to talk to people outside the basketball team or whatever sport you're involved with being able to get good insight from that is I think that's pretty valuable and just getting a well-rounded view and seeing the community and just a lot of things just outside of basketball We will end this week's episode there as Quinn tells about his patience in his recruiting and how talking to other players is important. Next week's episode of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast will be part two of this interview. Quinn has more great advice to pass on to the student athlete and their family. He talks about listing out pros and cons of each school that you are looking at, questions to ask college coaches, also that you should reach out for help, and how finding the right fit is important. Click like or subscribe on your favorite podcast app to make sure you get the newest episode every Tuesday. 
Check out the free recruiting power pack on recruit-me.com and join me and Quinn next Tuesday on the Athletic Scholarship Podcast.